Congratulations everyone, we did it! Windows 8.1 is officially dead. Finally. All the five Windows 7 fans out there can rise up. Oh. What, what, what do you mean it happened last year? Okay, I kid. This video was supposed to happen a year ago now, but because I'm bad at making videos, it didn't happen until now. But that doesn't mean I can't do it now. Windows 8.1 lost support about a year ago now, and I've been wanting to do a kind of installation retrospective, you know, thing. So that's what today's video is. That's, that's literally it. That's all I have this week. I only have one machine that runs this operating system, and it's broken right now, so I have zero machines that currently run this operating system. The computer we're going to be installing this on is my Dell Latitude E6530. This was my old workbench laptop that I featured a few videos ago. I'm currently phasing it out because it's beat to hell. But it's a pretty good laptop for its time. It's a Core i7-3740QM, 16 gigs of RAM, 500 gig hard drive, and the NVIDIA NVS5200M. This PC's hard drive just recently died, so I had to replace it, but now it has no operating system on it at all, nothing it could boot to. This computer, however, came with Windows 8.1 new, so it seemed like the perfect choice to install this on. I don't have very many Windows 8 computers, and I don't have any keys for Windows 8 because they were all embedded into BIOSes and stuff. So let's do it! We're going to be installing Windows 8 on this E6530. This is the first Dell Latitude E-Series PC that has UEFI support, so it fits even better. Now, again, for full clarity, this is Windows 8.1, not 8.0, although that could be a fun project for another day as well. I don't really plan on actually using this computer for anything serious, so installing an unsupported operating system on it is probably fine. It's not that big of a deal. This PC is probably about the last type of thing you would want to run Windows 8.1 on, though, since it's just a traditional laptop. Windows 8 was good for tablets and stuff, but this doesn't have a touchscreen or anything like that, so the traditional Windows 8 experience probably wouldn't be that great on this machine. Which is why something like this probably would have been used with Windows 7, or they were all just upgraded to Windows 10. But anyways, that's, you know, hypothetical stuff that no one cares about. I'm installing this from USB, mostly because I can't be bothered to go and burn a DVD, so you're welcome. And that turned out to be a pretty good decision, because this actually installed really fast. Like, I was kind of impressed, to be honest. It probably did the whole install in, like, 10 minutes. It does help that this computer has a 7200 RPM hard drive instead of a 500 gigabyte, but it's still a mechanical hard drive, so... And this computer on Windows 10 was pretty slow, as expected. But again, a short time later, we're at the Windows 8 setup screen, and this is very nostalgic. I used to use this operating system on a tablet. That's pretty much the only experience I have with it, but doesn't mean I didn't have any nostalgia of it, even though I was still a Windows 7 user. But the setup is, of course, pretty basic. I'm not connecting this to the internet right now, so I'm only creating a local account. That being said, it's kind of refreshing to see an operating system not immediately turn on every bit of tracking and information thing being sent to Microsoft. That's something we don't see anymore today. Otherwise, it's all pretty standard stuff. And a short time later, we're at the desktop. That wasn't too bad at all. It only took probably 15 minutes or so. Of course, since it's not connected to the internet right now, it won't activate. But it should activate when it goes online. Now it's time to install the drivers. Thankfully, we have a snappy driver installer for that. Well, not first after enabling System Restore, just because you never know what could go wrong with Snappy Driver Installer. Otherwise, it was time to install all 26 drivers or so. You might be wondering why I haven't plugged this into my capture card I used a few videos ago. And that's because this machine, for some reason, only outputs to HDMI when a graphics driver is initialized. So we have to install the graphics driver first. Because Dell things. Fortunately, enough of the drivers installed that I didn't really care. The only things that weren't installed had some kind of generic Windows driver already, so it wasn't really that big of a deal. The most important things I wanted were the video driver, so that I can indeed plug it into my capture card. I'll have to install proper NVIDIA drivers later, but you know, who cares about that type of thing? Especially because this is Fermi, so it last got a driver update in 2018. Now that that's done, it's time to switch over to the capture card so that you can actually see what's going on. After doing all that, it was time to update this thing. I decided to use Legacy Update. I don't think Windows Update on Windows 8 is dead, but I've had inconsistencies with it before, and either way, 
doing it this way is just generally faster than standard Windows Update on its own. Interestingly, it was trying to push driver updates for the graphics and Ethernet. Now out of instinct, I was going to install them, but then I decided to check the drivers that were already installed, and I'm kind of glad I did, because both the graphics and Ethernet drivers were way newer than the drivers it was trying to push through Windows Update. Never change, Microsoft. Anyway, it only took about an hour to download and install all of the updates on this thing, which is not too bad to be honest. I've been used to Windows Update on Windows 7 taking ages. The most impressive thing about all of this is I was able to install Windows, install the drivers, and install all the updates on a single battery charge. And that is the power of a 97 watt hour battery. Anyway, I was up doing something else while this was installing updates, but eventually when I came back, it was time to restart. And that's when I noticed a problem. It ended up sitting on restarting for, like, an hour. It didn't do anything, so I had to force it off, and when I restarted it, thankfully it got back to doing what it was supposed to be doing, but it was still kind of strange. And a short while later after that, we were back at the desktop. We were greeted by everyone's favorite, Microsoft Edge! I would normally complain about this, but I could have just not installed it, so joke's on me, I guess? Anyways, it's time to get back to work. I still have a few more updates to install. I want to fully update this as much as I can, since, I don't know, there's no reason not to. And I'll probably have to just hide those driver updates, because I don't want them. It makes no sense, especially with the graphics. While I was screwing around with this thing after I turned the recording off, I installed an old copy of Microsoft Office 2013 that I had on some old disk. Just because why not? And I mean, it's designed basically to work with Windows 8. It fits right in with its UI design. Now that we're done with all the drivers, let's check out the Microsoft Store. I don't know you remember when the store shut down anymore, but... Yeah, the store's been dead for a long time, and on this computer, it doesn't even load anything. It just ends up getting stuck on this display. Fortunately, more apps than I thought actually still worked, including the weather and the news, which is kind of funny. It doesn't stop this from being the most 2013 design ever. Now, I did want to install a few programs on this, just so that it wasn't, you know, super bare. So I went to Internet Explorer. Oh, apparently Microsoft Edge. Right, I forgot, you know, force a habit. I don't really care about Edge, so I just installed Firefox because it literally would not let me use IE at all, which is kind of stupid, but oh well. I can't install too much on this, and I don't really want to, but I did install a few basic things for music playing and stuff, one of them being Steam. As it turns out, it's apparently not dead on Windows 7 and 8. It just is supposed to be. What this means is that, yes, in fact, it can run Peggle. I guess that's my new benchmark game on this channel. Of course, a 3740QM and a NVS 5200M is, is a way overbuilt combo for this task, but still, you gotta give it something to do. An overbuilt machine, though, is not gonna help my pegging skills get any better, though, so let's move on. One of the things I did also install on this, admittingly, is the start menu. It's just open shell, it's nothing too fancy or anything. Part of the problem with Windows 8 start screen is it wasn't really designed for very high resolution screens, and yeah, you can make it bigger, but still, this is only a 1600 by 900 display, and even on that, it's pretty big. And in the case of my capture card, it's 1080p, and there's a lot of stuff you can fit on the screen, but when you're trying to navigate it with a mouse, it's kind of complicated. And with that, that's kind of about it. This wasn't really meant to be a super complicated video, just kind of a fun little, you know, installation adventure of installing Windows 8 on something. It was an idea I had a while ago, and I thought I could turn it into a video, but yeah, that's kind of about it. This laptop is kind of an interesting one, since the hardware in it's actually not too bad for its time, but it's beat to hell, and it's not really in the greatest shape. But I still probably will make its own 
dedicated video eventually, just because why not? And I'm not even sure if I'll even leave this on here. It was mostly just kind of, you know, just a bit of fun, really. That's about it. I mean, that being said, I might leave it on here since unlike both Windows 7 and Windows 10, it's actually pretty fast, even though I have had some weird issues with it, particularly when it's booting up. It doesn't seem to like actually booting up. It kind of hangs, but that's a separate problem I need to solve later. It's actually not that bad of an experience on this thing, and that's with it being a traditional laptop, not some kind of hybrid tablet whatever. It kind of goes to show that this had potential to do well, it's just that because of the whole start screen situation and everything being so confusing, consumers didn't really stick by it. 